Today on the Jason Vault Trades channel, we are going to talk about arc welding. We're going to talk about the basics of how the process works and then how you can get started in welding. Let's get to it. Now this process goes by a few different names. We have arc welding, stick welding, and then its official name is SMAW or shielded metal arc welding. If you hear any of those, know that we're talking about the same thing. Now let's talk about how the process actually works. So what our welding machine is going to do is push electricity through these cables into either the electrode holder and electrode or into our ground clamp and workpiece. Where the electrode meets that workpiece, there's going to be a small air gap. That electricity is going to jump from one to the other and it's going to create an arc. That arc is going to be around 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit and it's going to melt the base metal as well as the electrode. It's the mixing of these molten metals that causes the fusion or the welding to happen. Now welding machines can move electricity in a few different ways. The easiest one to talk about is AC or alternating current. In AC, the welding machine is going to push and pull the electrons or the electricity back and forth, creating an even distribution of heat between the electrode and the base metal. So it doesn't matter how your leads are hooked up because it's just pushing it back and forth. The other type of polarity is direct current or DC. And once again, we have a bunch of different names all talking about the same thing here. So DC EN, DC negative or straight polarity is where electricity goes through your electrode holder first and then into your workpiece. DC positive, DC EP or reverse polarity is when it goes to the ground clamp first into your workpiece and then up to your electrode. Which one is going to be best for you is going to be determined by what rod you're using. Let's real briefly talk about how you can change the polarity on your machine. Every machine is going to be a little bit different and if you're wondering how to do it on your particular machine, open up your manual, it's going to tell you how to do it. On a lot of machines what you can do is just take out your leads and just swap them around and that's going to effectively change your polarity. On this machine, I can do it internally. If you want to know for your machine, check your manual. Now let's talk about the electrodes that we're going to be using. There's lots and lots of rod options out there, but there's some things we can talk about to help you narrow down the field. All rods towards the bare end, so where you've got that exposed uh, piece of filler rod that you're going to connect to, there's four numbers on it. Some have more, but most of them have four. The first two numbers are going to identify that rod's tensile strength, so the amount of power it takes to pull it apart. The two numbers are numbers of thousands of pounds of tensile strength, so this example rod we have, a 6011, has takes 60,000 pounds of pressure to pull it apart. The next number identifies what positions that rod can be welded in, so on a 6011 rod, that number one means we can weld in the flat position, the horizontal position like this, the vertical position, or the overhead position. The last number of all the welding rods just describes that it's flux as well as what polarities it can be welded on. I'm going to put a chart up here for you so you can pause, take a screen grab of that so you can reference it later on. For starters, what I recommend, the two rods I recommend people start with is a 6011 rod and a 7018 rod for a couple reasons. Number one is it's going to give you a fast freeze rod that's going to allow you to fill gaps with the 6011. And the 6011 is really easy to start, so we'll get into that a little bit later. And then a 7018 rod is a more fluid rod that's going to allow you to build up material really quickly and it gives you nice pretty welds. The biggest things that these two rods do well is they have very clear and defined puddles which is going to allow you to improve your welding much faster than something like a 6013 rod that has a really murky puddle. That's going to make more sense when we get into our next section. Now let's get into some actual welding. So the first thing that you need to do is put on your PPE. That means long sleeve shirt, leather gloves, and a welding helmet. If you're curious on which welding helmet might be right for you, I've got a full video on that talking about the technologies and which ones you might want to look into. Then we're going to need to ground out our, our welding table so we can ground to our work piece. If you're doing this on the garage floor or outside, you can directly ground to your metal and that's not a problem either. We're going to grab our electrode 
and our electrode holder. Connect the two, and now we're ready to weld. You can check the inside of your machine to see what amperage you need to be on. I'm welding on 3 16 material with a 1 8 rod, and I'm using about 100 amps. Now what we need to do first is strike an arc. So we need to develop that arc that's actually gonna melt the metal. And the way you can think about this is like striking a match. So we're gonna do something just like this to get that arc going. And what we're gonna eventually see is a puddle develop. Now here our rod starts for us really easy. Your rods are probably not gonna start up this easy for you, especially as you're just getting started. But just be patient, it will become easier. As we continue forward, what I'm doing is I'm just watching that puddle and trying to keep the shape of it consistent. I wanna have a nice rounded back. I don't wanna have a big V in it. And I'll explain that here in just a little bit. But just drag it from one side to the other. If you're left-handed, go right to left. If you're right-handed, go left to right. Now that we've got our weld done, the next step in the process is to take a look at it. So we're gonna grab some pliers and take this and cool it off. Between shots, this has cooled down quite a bit, but once it's covered in water, you know it's pretty safe to grab with your gloves. The next step is to chip it off with a chipping hammer and a wire brush. You get it all cleaned up. Using a chipping hammer, you can take and you can scrape down the edge of your weld to get it cleaned up and then wire brush. A much faster and easier way to do it, however, is if you have access to an angle grinder with a wire wheel attachment, this makes this cleanup process much, much faster and you get a much better result, but you can do it with a wire brush all the same. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up with the wire wheel and then we'll take a look at it. Now this is not a perfect weld by any means, but it is a pretty good weld. So what we're looking for in a weld is we want to see something more along the lines of this, where these ridges are nice and even. Here where they start to kind of have more of a V pattern, I was going just a little bit too fast and I think my machine is set a little too hot for this material. But really this is the process of getting better at welding. Run a bead, take a look at it, and see where you can improve. Now that you've seen the first person view of what it's like under the hood, you're just about ready to get started in your welding career. I hope you're enjoying the video so far and if you're looking forward to more welding content like this, more how to's, we've got a lot more coming. So please like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of the videos in the series. A couple things I want to point out about that weld and about what you need to be doing when you're under the hood. The first is don't focus too much on whether you're doing circles or half moons or insert any of the other patterns that you can be drawing while you're welding. Just lean the rod about five degrees off of 90 and go from point A to point B. It's perfectly fine for getting started and there's plenty of time for fanciness later on. The second point is identify your puddle and watch it. Once you find that puddle, you should watch it for about 75% of the time that you're welding. Use the other 25% to watch where you're going. The third thing is you need to pay attention to your arc length. That's the distance between the end of your rod and your material. As you weld, that rod shrinks, so you have to be compensating for that the entire time that you're welding. It's something that takes a long time to build up the muscle memory for, so just keep it in mind as you're welding. Now let's talk about how you can practice welding without wasting a bunch of material. Now to practice welding, you're obviously going to need metal, but you can make your metal go a lot further if you overlap your welds. So one of the things I suggest is making an arc pad. So once you've got one bead on the plate and I suggest coming off the edge about an eighth of an inch, you can continue to stack welds side by side and overlap them like this rather than just have them next to each other. And what that's gonna allow you to do is put way more welds on a plate 
than you would otherwise. So I'm gonna go ahead and stack a few on here and compare it to one where I put them just next to each other. Okay, so side by side here, I've got two examples of practice plates. The one that I just did where I overlapped them about halfway, so what I'm doing is I'm shooting to put the center of my rod at the toe of the, the weld I did before it, and here where I separated them all out. Obviously, we're, gonna, we're not gonna be able to get nearly as much practice on this plate as we are on this one. So when you're practicing, overlap your welds. You're gonna save yourself a lot of money on metal and be able to get a lot more practice in. Now before I talk about some of the most important things that I see newcomers not paying attention to, I want to thank you so much for your time and watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. I have really enjoyed making these videos. And uh, not only that, but I've really enjoyed all the support that, that I've been getting on them. So thank you guys so much for that if you're returning to the channel. But without further ado, let's talk about a couple of things that really make a difference when you're starting out welding. Number one is clean off the end of your electrode. Have a file in your bag and just take, take the file and knock off the end of the electrode before you get started. It's gonna give you a much cleaner start and it's gonna make that process a lot easier. And the second thing is knowing how to set your machine. So if you go to strike your arc and you're having a lot of trouble doing that, turn your machine up. If you can start the, start the rod fine and get a weld going, but it feels like it's running away from you or getting too hot, turn your machine down. Doing those couple things will drastically improve your welding. The last thing that you need, to, you need to do is finish your weld strong. So rather than getting to the end and just jerking your rod out, get to the end, stop there for about half a second, and then come back into the weld a little bit and then pull out and you're gonna see some success. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a wonderful day.